I'm getting ready to speak with Roxy T. She's the founder of the wildly popular furniture company, Society Social. She and her husband and their little daughter just moved from New York City back to Roxy's hometown in North Carolina. So she's gonna show off a bit of their new house as well as the spring collection of furniture. So hope you enjoy and keep watching. Hi. Hey there, Roxy. Hi, how are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm good. I'm uh, finally starting to get the hang of these uh, Instagram <laughs> lives. How is it with all this space now that you've left New York? It's, you know, like I said, it's like a whole new world. We um, had our daughter, Austin, uh, in New York in our little apartment in Gramercy that we love so much. Um, but it was a one bedroom and we were just busting at the seams like it was baby in the bedroom um and her pack and play in the living room and you know after a, about a year we were like thrown in the towel we needed more space so we moved down here and now she just runs all over she never has to, know to do it herself no. And she's always barefoot or naked. And that's not something that's real feasible in the city. So it's good. It's good. And, you know, especially for now. Um, I mean, I just you miss, you miss about New York. Oh, everything. I'm heartbroken still. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, you can always come back. Yeah, I mean, I moved to New York when I was 21 or 20. Um, after college, I went to Parsons and did um, like a, a grad program there. And I fell in love with the city and um, everything about it. I grew up in a small town here in North Carolina. And You're the, in your hometown, right? Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. I run into my prom day at the post office. <laughs> that is funny. It's funny. Um, but... Um, I mean, it's just, it's good for Austin. Um, I do miss New York and I always will. I love the diversity. I love the restaurants. I love the culture. I love just like walking out, just walking down the sidewalk. All like the energy is there, you know? You just feel like you're in it. Um, do you think you'd always go back to your hometown? Uh, honestly, my goal was to leave and to never come back. <laughs> Um, I mean, I don't get me wrong. I feel terrible for anyone local who's watching. Um, I love it here. It was a great place to grow up. I just was lacking. I love the big city. I do. That's just something that excites me. And, um, it's, it's different here, but, uh, yeah, I can't believe I'm here. Honestly, I cried for three weeks before we left New York city. I mean, I would walk down the sidewalk and I would just like weep. <laughs> But you know what? It will always be there. You can always come back to visit, and it will welcome you yeah. with open arms. But yeah. I'm so excited for you. I mean, you've had a huge year. You moved from New York after 10 years. You. you built a house, not just bought a house, but built your dream house yeah. and opened up your flagship store. So are you feeling exhausted or energized? Both. Like, yeah. at intervals, every day both um you know it has been a, a really big year and i think instagram has a terrible way of showing just the highlights um and granted we're so grateful and we're so blessed and um all all good things but it really has i feel like my husband and i got our asses handed to us this year <laughs> Um, it's just been stressful and my husband works in New York. So I'm a single mom during the week. Um, I didn't know that. So he commutes. Yeah. Every week he leaves us on Mondays at like four in the morning, works in New York till Thursday night, and then comes back to us for the weekend. Um, so when we left New York, that's kind of why I was so sad because I knew it was like the start of that. Um, but, uh, Has it been like that even during quarantine or he's with you now? You know, that's a silver lining. I hate, you know, this is obviously all horrible, but Alan has been with us for like four weeks, four, four and a half, hey, six maybe weeks. maybe it's long. going to be the new normal for the foreseeable future, probably. You know, I, I do think a lot of businesses are going to reevaluate how um, they let their employees work from home. So, I yeah. Agree.
my husband said to me the other day, I think I might be staying home for like quite a while longer. And I wasn't sure if I should be excited <laughs> or terrified. Yeah. Because yeah. I work from home a lot. And we yeah. live in a very small New York City apartment too. And yeah. He's, and I was like, well, uh, how are we going to do this? I mean, we can't both be on calls and be doing interviews at the same time. We'll be talking over each other. And he said, oh, well, I'll just set up a tent on the balcony. Okay. Whatever I mean, works, Michael. Do what you got to do. Where are y'all now? Um, we are just outside of the city. We left about two months ago um, and are hunkered that down in a family place. Crazy. Just to have a little bit more space because – with it was just so difficult being in I mean we are probably in like 550 square feet in Manhattan so mm -hmm. teeny teeny I know the feeling yeah. you had when you felt like you were bursting yeah themes but right. so now you have this house you're decorating it um, yeah what is your personal approach to style um you know people ask me this question a lot and I always say that you should start decorating with something that you love, whether it's, you know, a piece of art that you fall in, in love with or a textile. I love fabrics. Um, when you start with something that really inspires you and something that you really love, I feel like it comes more naturally. Um, and, you know, I, I went to business school. Um, I didn't, I wasn't trained to be a designer or a decorator and I don't claim to be, but, um, I feel like that's how I approach things in my elementary kind of way, not having, you know, been trained to be an interior designer. Um, and then, you know, Society Social really was my way of catering to the 26-year-old me who loved high-end design, but I couldn't afford it. You know, I um, wanted all the customization um, aspects of designing a sofa, but for the most part, you had to hire a designer or, you know, try to reach out to trade resources that a 26 year old doesn't have the financial resources to do. Um, so Society Social was born to cater to myself. <laughs> but that's the best kind of way to start a company, you know, because there yeah. are plenty of other people exactly like you who want the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, um, Thankfully, there there has been because we've really seen um, a growth in not only our consumer business, but also our designer business, which makes me really happy. Um, I think we that's because we've really tried to make Society Social a place for easy, um, accessible design. Um, so whether you're a consumer or you're a designer, it's super simple. Um, our designers can log in on the back end of our website and design an order and see their pricing. And the consumer, um, you know, has all the same oh, options great. that the designer oh, does. Great. Yeah, yeah. How did you come up with your name? Um, <laughs> so I like to drink. <laughs> I've been drinking a little too much lately, to be honest. I'm starting to feel bad you about myself. You are not alone. <laughs> Is it okay? Oh, my it gosh. Okay. Um, so I like to entertain. I like to drink. Um, and so it was around the time that the bar cart became was starting to trend. And um, remember Mad Men on HBO? Yes. Love that yes. Show. It was really, really starting to gain popularity. I was really into it. And there were just these bar carts everywhere. Um, and I was reading about the bar cart. There was an article in the New York Times about um, how it was a staple in mid-century American homes. Um, a ton of bloggers were blogging about bar carts. But no one was able to link out to where to buy one. Mm -hmm. um, so I did some searching on the market. I think Jonathan Adler had one for like $1,500. And that was really the only place. Like... Pottery Barn, West Elm, all those places that have bar carts now didn't have any. Um, so I was like, I know someone who could make me a bar cart. <laughs> my families have factories. Um, so I quit my corporate job. I launched Society Social with six bar carts um, and really was inspired by the social aspect of furniture mm -hmm. and how um, we always say you should decorate to entertain. So that's kind of where society social came about because we were kind of, um, you know, inspired by that social aspect of opening your home to, you know, your loved ones and, you know, your friends. And so that's kind of, that's where it came from. That's a great story. So then when you started with six bar carts, did you have any idea that it would turn into this massive empire where you are selling 
every piece of furniture <laughs> under the sun? That's so kind. Um, no, honestly, I was 26 and I um, was just like, let's try this out. It might be fun. <laughs> um, and um, uh, unfortunately, things kind of took a turn for the worse because 2008, the economy crashed. Yeah. I um, started Society Social in 2011, kind of in the midst of it all. And I saw my family's factories really go through it. And um, I never really thought I would feel the pressure of having to grow the business to help support the factories. I thought it might be like a sideshow. But very quickly, I kind of realized that if I didn't grow my business, that our, there was a chance our factories would make it. So it started off as kind of like, let's see if this works. Um, our factories were had always catered B two B. We never they never were a consumer facing brand. So Society Social was the first consumer facing brand. Um, we had a website, an ecom website, um, and it was really, really very much an experiment. And thankfully, the timing was kind of right. It was extremely stressful. Uh, but now I didn't really think that it would grow to a place that it is now and it still doesn't it still doesn't feel like um I don't know it still doesn't feel like yeah well it is <laughs> real and you have this incredible new spring collection um with Ariel Orkin and you have some new pieces out which are some of them in your house yeah they're right here <laughs> are you able to show off a little bit of them yeah we're back we did it. <laughs> thankfully, um, I'm a like borderline millennial, but my sister is here with me. And thankfully, she was able to uh, help me figure this out. I know. I definitely rely on the younger girls on the team when it comes to things like this. I have no idea what just happened there. But um, I'm glad but we're we back. back. We're back. Um, so, yeah. Can you show us some of your uh, beautiful new house and your designs? Yeah, I'd love to. All right. Let me turn this around. Um, one second. All right, y'all. Um, this is actually our dining room, but when we decided to shoot our spring collection here, this room gets the best light. So um, this is our spring collection with interior designer Ariel Oaken. And, you know, we wanted to include all categories. So we have this beautiful ottoman that is handwoven by our artisans at our factory in the Philippines. Um, the upholstered top is upholstered here at our factory in North Carolina. So, you know, really proud to be able to support the two operations. Um, we have these really fun swivels. I don't know if y'all can I see. I love that they swivel. Yeah, I mean, we've been doing uh, upholstery for a couple years now, and swivels really sell well for us. Um, I think people like the versatility. Um, this is our Benny Rattan bookcase. It is handcrafted. Um, this is all handwoven. These rattan poles are uh, bent by hand, um, also made in the Philippines. Um, all our pieces that are rattan and grass cloth and of that sort um, – those materials are native to the Philippines, so that's why those are made there. Um, this is and I feel the like that something like that could work just as fine in a New York City apartment or in a beach setting. You know, I love that you say that. We've been saying that for years. <laughs> I feel like people are finally starting to get it that rattan is not only for like the 1980s. Um, sunroom patio that you would think no. of, um, like for grandma in, in Palm Beach, um, but. If you notice, like, at New York bars and, and clubs in the past couple of years, there's been a ton of rattan. Um, I think there's a new rooftop bar at the White. Yes. I mean, they featured a ton of um, woven furniture. There's a rooftop bar um, right there off Madison Square Park at the – that really chic hotel right there? I can't remember, but they had a ton of rattan. And we were just like, finally, if you are starting to get it, that you can put it in New York, but you can put it and at the coast. Pick. Yeah, totally. Um, let's see. What else do we have here? Oh, we have this I little. I love that your, um, your sort of coffee table is named after your dad and your father-in-law, right? The Bobby Oh, it's, it's actually Ariel's dad and father-in-law. So um, uh. that's the UPS man. Um, she named all the designs after um, family, which I thought was really endearing and sweet. So this, and speaking of family, this is named after 
her sweet grandma who is 86. <laughs> this is a Franny and this is all handwoven caning. Um, and then the mahogany frame you can finish in any color. Um, but that's, that's the collection and these beautiful pillows. Oh, and then this the bed my, and sofa is the bunny. Yeah, the bunny. So the bunny was inspired by a reference image that we found um, in a Vogue photo shoot. Um, whoops. Um, of the sofa um, or something like it in Bunny Mellon's Antigua estate, which is now owned by Tori Birch. So um, we wanted to recreate it because we were just, we just thought it was timeless and chic. And I feel like this piece can really, I don't know, transition to a modern space, whether, you know, it's modern or traditional. It's just really easy. What's your trick for keeping a white sofa white? Oh, performance fabric. <laughs> <laughs> Have y'all seen us? Have you seen us do the wine demo? No. Should I do it really quickly? Is it gonna work? Totally. Okay, do it. <laughs> All right, hold on. I just let want me, you to stain your couch. Let me find some wine. I know this might be a little tricky because I typically have it in like a little baby dropper um, for my daughter's Tylenol. Let's see, y'all. I keep my red wine in the bottom. fridge. I don't know if that's weird, but <laughs> I always have. Um, hold on, let's see. If I can... This is very exciting and unexpected. I wasn't, uh, this is, what a treat. Uh, <laughs> I love having some paper towels. And then this is the rest of our house, actually. It's not quite decorated, but I'll give you all a little peek. Um, our beautiful new oh counter stool. I love those chairs. Um, thank you. It's a mess. I wasn't really expecting to show this side of the house. No, no, it's not a mess. Um, oh, and look, that beautiful floral fabric. Yes, our new chairs, um, our tasselly sofa. Um, all right, let's see if we can make this happen without causing too much of a mess. So our performance fabrics are really cool because the liquid repellency characteristic is something that, hold on, a lot of people is appealing to so many because you know whether it's red wine or, or your child and juice and it beads up and rolls off um i'm getting a little nervous well i am too because i'm doing this <laughs> one-handed <laughs> oh hold on let's see if i can just pour a little bit in this coop all right and here's my bar Oh, oh, that's so pretty. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, that's a great bar. Yeah, and all this for the low, low price of less than my New York City apartment. <laughs> Don't even tell me this. I know. Right. Okay, guys, here we go. Here is our, oh, my God, and there's, like, cheese crumbs on here from my daughter. Let's see. I'm going to try to, one second. There we go. Look, y'all. And then you take a paper towel and it wicks off. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. And gosh. then for like extra cleaning, you can take um, like water and soap. and. But that's pretty cool, no? <laughs> that is incredible. I would get a white sofa. That's I really want to drink this. You need to have a sip because you're uh, yeah. relieved that it worked. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's my incredible. tip for keeping a white sofa clean is to buy one in our performance fabric. <laughs> <laughs> um, what a, that's incredible. I can't get over that. I didn't even know that sort of existed. But um, yeah. And you have this beautiful table in your entryway with scalloped edges oh. I had a little peek of. Yeah, this is where I set up our little call, but um, it's not styled out. Sorry, y'all. But this is the Amy table, and these uh, scallops are handcrafted by our team in the Philippines. And, I mean, a lot of a lot goes into these pieces. You know, it, it was like, how wide should the scallops be? How tall should they be? How far apart should they be? And I um, am lucky to work with a team um, who can take my feedback and turn it into this beautiful piece and this piece is available in any Sherwin Williams or Benjamin Moore color and that's something that's really I think made us competitive we started doing that in 2011 um it's all it's beautiful 
um, Roxy. It's a stunning spring collection. I'm so excited Thank for you. It. I'm for you. Thank you so much. Um, are you, um, how, so, so you describe, are, well, do you describe yourself as, um, I read something where it's like a traditionalist, but also you embrace sort of granny chic, or where do you find yourself on this spectrum? Um, you know, I like to say new traditional. I, I don't know if that's cliche, but, um, you know, I really appreciate the greats, um, Mario Buada and um, those types of designers, but it was just a little too much print on print and, you know, it was just a lot. Um, so I feel like a new traditionalist appreciates that design, but then kind of brings it to the modern ages and it's a little less, for me, a little less busy. Um, I still yeah. have the chance, I still have the tassels, but it's just a little bit here and there. You know what I mean? Mixed in with like solids and, and just not pattern yeah. on pattern on pattern. Yeah. But you said Shins is back for 2020. It sure is. <laughs> I mean, it can be a little pop on a pillow or a whole headboard or um, I just, I like I said, um, when you asked me how I'd like to decorate, I like to start with something I love. And that's most often a multicolor print, a multicolor chintz, because I feel like, you know, you can pull from the colors and, and make a room really cohesive. So this print right here is my one of my favorites of all time. And I love so that. That's so feminine and soft. Thank you. It is um is it Lee Chofer or Brunch Wing and Fee? I can't remember. But you know, I'm I'm pulling the colors um everywhere. I'm gonna put in some more greens and blues, but it's really helped me pull the, the living room together. Um <laughs> Where do you find new inspiration for your designs when you're thinking of a new collection or when you're looking forward? Where are you pulling from? Um, all these books that I have. Let's see. Um, that's just a few of them, and there's more over here. Let's see. I love to decorate with books, too. Oh, that's cool. <sighs> Oh, I love all these blue books. Oh, you've got sort of yeah. color schemes going on. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I really, I love to read. I love to read magazines. My family has been in furniture since before I was born. So we've always um, subscribed to all the shelter magazines. I grew up reading those. And when I search for inspiration, I, I start there. And um, Society Social really came to be because I fell in love with this tassel sofa in Tori Birch's New York apartment and I couldn't afford it so <laughs> aside from the bar card I was like how do we bring this to the market at a lower price point um, but I believe I stumbled upon it I don't know if it was on a website or a magazine but I really draw inspiration from those you know beautifully designed um, spaces oh hi Elizabeth sorry one of my friends just popped in <laughs> Oh, and my friend Aaron actually just popped in too. So with your family being in the business for so many years, did you think that this was what you would do? Or did you ever have, I don't know, when you were a kid, did you think maybe I'll be a lawyer? Maybe I'll be a doctor? Or did you think this is, I'm going to go into the family business? I definitely wanted to run as fast as I could in the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> and um, with, you all, didn't. with all due respect. Um, and now I'm back. No, I mean, I just, I grew up going to all the markets and the trade shows. And I literally, by the time I was like six, seven, or, you know, around that age, I was at High Point Market in the showroom, just sitting there all day while my parents worked. And um, in high school, I answered the phones and invoiced. And um, when I got old enough, I started shopping fabric markets and um, merchandising the showrooms. And I just, when you grow up with it, I was like, eh let's just do something else. <laughs> I just wanted to do something different. And when I got to New York, you know, I went to Parsons and I interned for Donna Karen. I worked at fashion week when there were still the big tents and um, that's what I wanted to do. But um, things took a turn in a good way. Um, yeah. So. And you ended up where you're supposed to be. I think so. Oh, there goes my phone again. Hopefully that doesn't mess up. Um, well, let me ask you before we sign off. So people have obviously been quarantined in their homes for the past two months now. 
um, and maybe they're getting sick of looking at their same furniture and rugs and decorations. If somebody's right. looking, <laughs> that's the <it> hope. <laughs> just a little bit, you know, maybe people don't have big budgets, but what can you do? Like a couple of things that are um, small things you can do, but pack a big punch. Paint, a uh, gallon of paint costs like 50 bucks. Um, you can paint an entire room and give it a whole new feel. That's such an easy and quick way to really make a huge impact. Um, what else? <laughs> I just saw uh, my brother-in-law chime in. They actually, this is happening to them. They've been quarantined for weeks on end and every other minute, my sister is like, what do you think if we knocked out this whole cabinet? And, and my brother-in-law pulled all the floors up um, last no week. Way. Like on a whim, pulled their entire carpet up and started to lay down um, hardwood floors. But um, if you don't take it to that level, I think paint is probably the easiest thing and most affordable thing to do to, That's you know, hard. really make a big difference. Or, I don't know, buy a new rug. Rugs can be um, pretty affordable if you can shop the market correctly. And um, same with maybe like... I don't know, interesting pieces of art or something on Etsy that can change the, uh, like a pop on the wall. I mean, pillows, pillows are an easy switch out. Um, I just thought of paint first because this room right here in my office, let's see. If I can turn it around. Sorry, it's a disaster. <laughs> but um, I mean, the paint and the wallpaper in here. So I love how you wallpapered just one wall. Are you doing the rest or are you going to keep some of them empty? Oh, no, girl. I can't afford to do the rest. <laughs> no, so that's a really great trick. You can wallpaper yeah. like accent walls. Yeah, I mean, I typically, typically don't like to do an accent wall because it feels like kind of like half ass. Um, but that's why I decided to paint um, to kind of match the background of the wallpaper to make it more cohesive versus like all white and then boom this huge floral wall. Um, but yeah, that's a great trick. Um, nice if you're trying to say that. Yeah, um, Roxy, okay, Mother's Day's on Sunday. I know everybody's at home, but do you have any plans with your little one? Uh, Austin and I are going to wear matching outfits. And, uh, <laughs> and take just got, yeah, I just got on the matching train um, and kind of, kind of funny my husband knows I like I love oysters so he ordered oysters from this um, company called Island Creek Oysters and so we'll have like an oyster roast wearing we're gonna wear matching outfits <laughs> that sounds like heaven yeah yeah well, happy early mother's day thank, thank you so you. much for chatting I'm sorry we had technical difficulties but yeah. um, anyway this was so much fun well, thanks for having me. I hope um, you guys continue to be um, safe and, you know, make the most of quarantine. And, I'm, you know, this is really fun. All right. Bye, Roxy. Bye, y'all. Thank you all for joining. Yes, Bye. thank you so much. Bye.